But today, we have a very, very special guest, and uh, he is, uh, let me do a nice introduction for you here, uh, Senator. He is uh, Senator Clarence Nishihara. He is uh, the chair for the Senate Agriculture Committee. Uh, he represents the 18th District, which is uh, Waipahu, Pearl City, and Crestview. Right. Is that correct? Is that well, correct? Well, I think uh, since the last, uh, uh, when they redid the redistricting, I'm now the 17th, not the 18th. Oh, are now. you the 17th now? Oh. Yeah. You know, they should change the online, what it says online, because it says 18th. <laughs> Anyway, same uh, place, different number. Same place, different <laughs> number. <laughs> that's okay. Anyway, he's um, he's a very uh, he, uh, Senator Nishihara is a senator that's very close to the topic of agriculture. He grew up uh, in the upcountry town of Makavao on the island of Maui, uh, where he he is he's very familiar with the farmers and small farmers and how they work. Um, it was these humble beginnings that uh, taught him the love for the land, and how appropriate it would be that after all these years that he will become the. Uh, the head of the Agriculture Committee for the Senate. So welcome. Welcome, Senator. Well, thank you. And mabuhay. Yes. And uh, with him today uh, are Mark and Mark. That's easy yep. to remember. And uh, the first Mark. Uh, please, Mark, introduce yes. yourself. Yeah. Hi, Alan. Uh, I'm Mark Philipson with Syngenta. And uh, I have an agricultural degree and background. And uh, have been here in uh, Hawaii for the last six years and worked for Syngenta for the last four. Syngenta. Yes. Okay. And uh, Mark? Aloha. My name is Mark Stoudemire. I was um, born and raised in Hawaii, working in ag for many, many years. I'm the station manager and research scientist for DuPont Pioneer, or Pioneer Hybrid, oh. in, in the Cunha area. Oh, wow. Very nice. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I see that you're both very qualified to talk about the subject. And the uh, conversation natin ngayon, mga kaibigan, is GMO. Okay, GMO and uh, genetically modified organisms. Um, could you tell us, uh, Senator, what exactly is this GMO? Well, um, the GMO, uh, as um, maybe some people are not familiar with it, it's really a, a process in how they um, do the genetic um, uh, breeding of uh, various plants, um, in this case, plants. And uh, they pick out the, uh, the best qualities that they want, and they um, and have these uh, genes inserted into the uh the genetic material of the, which then becomes a seed, which is then replanted, and those genetic uh, uh, issue, uh, particular uh, things that they want in it, uh, in the outcome of the when it's grown and it produces, is a is a quality that uh, what people want and need. So that's uh, pretty much what uh, the GMO issue is. So it's actually mo modifying the the actual seed is it modifying the seed or what what is it that they're actually modifying yeah uh, what we can do is selectively put traits into the plant for example um, the very popular trait that was introduced last year to the farmers was drought tolerant plants so uh, the plant will produce the same yield with less water and uh, last wow. last year in the midwest um, that ended up being a, a fairly um, good product for the farmers because there was a, a drought in many areas, so they didn't get the full rainfall. Uh, most of the corn and soybean that's raised on the mainland uh, is dry land farmed. It's it's not uh, uh, you know done with sprinklers or uh, or drip irrigation. So they they're relying on on Mother Nature and and the typical rainfall that they get in the summer to uh, to grow that, and they had less than average last year. I didn't know what it, that. I thought we all used uh, irrigation systems for farming. I guess not. I guess not. Oh, so, so when you put these traits in there, the, um, I guess the the question is when you're changing the trait or the 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 genetic makeup of the seed, does it affect us when we eat them? Does it? Will we grow wings or will we <laughs> will we become Vulcans? You know, I, I don't really. That, I think those are some of the questions that yep. people were qu asking. Uh, the, the the answer is no. It's okay. as safe as any other crop. Uh, but humans have been breeding plants, modifying plants uh, from the beginning of civilization, changing the way, the, the size of the fruit, the way it tastes. This is just the, the most modern way to do it and a very precise way to do it, to add value to farmers so that they can, uh, can decrease their inputs. So basically make more food on a smaller area of land or, with, or, or be able to, to provide them more income as a farmer because they have less inputs they need to put in. Mm -hmm. 
And Alan, I guess if you look at the supermarkets, you'll find that at one time, the only uh, cauliflower you have would be all white. Now they come in kind of a purplish, some green. Those are the yes, modifications yes. that have been going mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm, Same mm -hmm. with the bell peppers. It used to be all green, right? Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. them orange, some mm -hmm. red. So mm -hmm. I think those are the kinds of modifications that were put into that mm -hmm. to, uh, to what I think the uh, consumer wanted in terms of its variety. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so there's no absolute danger to people. Uh, this GMO, they, they don't cause cancer or nothing like that. It's perfectly safe to eat and we're perfectly be healthy. Go ahead, Mark. Yes. Yeah, no, no, they, they are the most thoroughly tested and regulated uh, foods that, uh, that are consumed. That's what I would it, think. You know. it, it, yeah. it takes uh, seven to ten years of, of research, and during that research time, the companies are working with uh, the FDA, the USDA, and in some cases the EPA, uh, uh, sharing data and uh, compiling uh, information for the potential approval of that product. And in particular, as far as uh, food safety is concerned, these products are looked for for uh, toxicity tests, i.e. allergens, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and nutritional value. Mm -hmm. uh, they, and so they, they have to pass the grade in both of those categories and be similar to their, their sister conventional or organic crops, or they will not pass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's very strict. It's a very strict process. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, so what are, are there any potential risks to humans with these GMOs? And if so, what, what are they? I mean, what are the potential risks uh, other than not tasting good or being spoiled or, you know, at natural uh, causes? Um, th there, there are no risks that have been found in, in a commercial product and it's very rigorously tested. But they do look for allergenicity. So some people are allergic to peanuts, for example. Yes. Um, and so they make sure that any crop uh, that is a biotech crop doesn't have allergies that would affect people. They look at the nutrition content. How, how healthy is it for you? Mm -hmm. And is it equal to a, a plant um, that is not genetically modified? And it has to pass these strict tests to make sure that it is available and safe for, for people to eat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I pick up a GMO apple, a GMO, it's just as fine as if I would pick something that was grown organically. That is correct. Uh, I don't know that uh, apples are, are just an example yeah yeah, yeah right right uh, corn i think but, is but, but, but corn, corn is, so, corn and soybean and are and and the reason why the commodities uh you know there there I, I don't know of any gmo celery for example or or smaller crops like that mm -hmm. is is that the the marketplace for that is relatively small mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. uh just uh, in 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 the seeds that we develop here are, are used throughout the world. But in just in the United States last year, there was almost 100 million acres of corn planted. I think our state comprises of somewhere between two and three million acres. I'm not exactly sure, but wow. that, that's, a, that's a lot of Hawaii's just, so just, much, just yeah. in corn. And wow. soybeans, about 70 uh, plus million acres. So uh, there's a lot of seed that needs to be distributed just in the United States, let alone the, the South America and, and, and uh, other continents. So. Uh, that is um, uh, the role of Hawaii is that we are the nurseries here that help the development to that seed that goes to those farms. So what are what are the so if there's no issue and there's no um, there's no really health risk what 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 is the challenge here, Senator, on, on with GMO and you know what what are we up against? Why is this coming out now? Like. Monsanto's making. We were in Maui at the fiesta, the Maui fiesta. They were they were picketing the Monsanto and the GMO. What what, what is the challenge here, uh, Senator? Well, as as you know, a, a few days ago, I guess uh, in Waikiki they had a big march, right? Yes, yes, GMO, that too in Waikiki, primarily too. against Monsanto. Mm -hmm. um, but the there paper, there though. are groups that are um, opposed to any kind of GIA, genetic modifications of the food crop, and I think what you have to look at is. Um, they somehow believe uh, that uh, the use of the science uh, makes somehow uh, uh, makes it unfit for human consumption. Unfortunately, that's the message they send out. And so, uh, although uh, they, re they do some referencing of some science studies that have been done, uh, one in particular that they mentioned is uh, one that was supposedly done with rats and done by a, a French scientist. But even with the um, in the um, 
the French, uh, the French equivalent of the Academy of Sciences, the French Academy, has uh, roundly disputed those studies. So even for the researcher who is French, uh, uh, doing that has been found to be um, less than uh, correct in this uh, process of uh, at the results that he showed. Mm -hmm. So you know what what happens is that these kinds of things get passed around, and there isn't much. Um, vetting and looking at these things and so what happens is that it becomes as if that these kinds of statements and, uh, and issues about scientific experiments being um, more right than uh, those that are put out by uh, the usda or by other scientists or other universities somehow seems to denigrate those and uh, at the same time um, uh, seems to purport that these other kinds of studies are, are much better and uh, more true to what is going on. And I, I think we've had a number of uh, meetings on those, and I think we tend to dispute those as well. So mm -hmm. um, as far as those are for those who are anti to the issue. Okay, so what, what are the foods that, are we are, or, that we are producing here in Hawaii that are GMO? Are there any uh, that we are producing here <clears throat> that are GMO? Well, for foods? whole foods, as far as um, I understand, it's um, most of the papayas, papaya. Um, papaya, and there's some squashes, and also the the BT corn, the sweet corn, which uh, people buy. That uh, they either they get it from uh, Alun Farms or other places that's sold in the supermarkets. Those are the I think primarily the crops that so are whole foods anyway. So, so papaya, corn, and, and some squashes, and some squash. Right. Okay. And do we do we export that out from here? Do we? Do we sell to other, or do is everything that we produce GMO here only for our market? I think primarily, I think with the exception of papayas, which now have been exported to Japan, mm -hmm. which, as most people uh, understand, the Japanese are very uh, concerned about GMO um, uh, products. I think the whole but, world right now is right, right, right. being concerned. And, yes, um, and they've accepted that they they feel they feel it's uh, safe enough. The government feels it's safe enough. To have it sold to their population so i think they've vetted it quite well i thought mm -hmm. and so uh, but what happens is um you know products are manufactured and reprocessed so there are some of these ingredients are into things like corn flakes uh, corn syrup oh really yeah so you know the, the question then becomes how much of the genetic quality that's in that the traits are in that in those products when it's been processed uh, are, are sufficient amount in terms of its what's what's there that uh, to be one of concern and apparently the answer is no. So th does it taste better? Can you make it taste better? Like can you? And I, I'm saying this because when I go to the Philippines, I eat a banana from the Philippines, and then I compare it with a banana here. Uh, they're smaller, but my God, the taste, man! <laughs> yeah. It tastes so much. No, really, it there's a it packs a lot of taste. <laughs> I have an example of where it's actually made um, a, a crop healthier to, to eat. And, and this is an example called golden rice. Golden. And there's a lot of places in the world where rice is the main starch eaten. But, yeah. there's, but there's issues with vitamin A in people's diets. And that can affect kids and their eyesight. They can lose their eyesight. So golden rice is a, a biotech uh, rice that has a, a gene that will produce that vitamin A compound. So that in places where they, they're lacking in their diet, they can eat this rice, get vitamin A in their diet, and then restore sight to, to millions of children around the world. Really? So a neat, a neat story. Yeah. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So you can take the traits. It, it, that, that can be part of the traits. You can put in more vitamins, more sure. vitamin C or more. Oh, really? Right. Um, t today, the, the industry is... Uh, to date has products on, um, on in the marketplace that focus more on what we call input traits so that they are, uh, you know, less tilling of the land, uh, so soil conservation, uh, the less pesticide use, uh, the drought tolerant that I told you about, uh, better yield. Uh, these are all what we call input traits, and, and those things uh, really are, are uh, of value to the farmer primarily. But they also keep the price of, of the, you know, the raw materials down. So that's ultimately a benefit to the consumer. But what, we, what, what uh, marking and you are alluding to, Alan, are what we call um, uh, output traits or, or things that 
that uh, affect the product that will change the nutritional value of it um, or take uh, uh, somebody had said peanuts earlier you know uh, I, I foresee in the future that the uh, the allergen that's in peanuts will be isolated and then you will be able to uh, basically um, remove that trait from, really? from the peanuts and you'll have allergen free peanuts I think sometime that's amazing. in our future I, I'm allergic to shrimp I mean, could you take the thing out of the shrimp? <laughs> no, we can't do it with shrimp. We can do it with foods, just so vegetables. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're just sticking with plants. Right okay, now. let's stick to plants. <laughs> let's stick to I plants. Guess we're not going to agriculture right now. <laughs> we're not agriculture right now. Yeah. Okay. But, but I think sure. you had, there was a question. I think you touched on it was the use of pesticides, and I think that's what maybe we'd like to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. Either, yeah. Either Mark could talk Actually, about you brought up two interesting points. I wanted to talk about the pesticides and the price. Uh, about the pesticides, um, if we use the pesticide, does it really affect the the the, the seed and the the output and what's being brought out? If we use pesticides, I'll answer. So, products like pesticides are used by all farmers, whether they're organic farmers, okay. you know, which a lot of people don't realize, whether they're conventional or biotech farmers, and okay. and they're used to help protect crops. Um, and they're used in a very modern way, very judiciously. So only when needed. And each each of the farmers here in Hawaii has a, a program called integrated pest management. And what that means, it's a way where you use biological control. So that might be beneficial insects to help reduce pests. You use cover crops to 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 raise those. You scout for insect problems and then only when there's a certain number of them would you go in and and uh, do something about it so it's not it's a very systematic very well thought out very low impact way of farming so so none it doesn't really affect then yeah it, uh, i just want to address one other um yeah. issue their concern of of uh, people in for people in hawaii is that uh there is a um an understanding that perhaps uh, more pesticides are used or that the companies are using uh, Hawaii as a test ground for new uh, chemicals or chemistries that uh, uh, have not been approved. And that is strictly not the case. Uh, all, all the farmers uh, in, in the biotech industry uh, only use EPA approved and we follow the label, that's the law, and then we, we all follow that. Uh, we, we are agricultural companies and the last thing that we would do would be to harm the land or, or people or, or what we do. Okay. Um, okay. We, we live here too. <laughs> yes. And you eat the same thing. And we eat the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, so you right, wouldn't right. feed yourself, yeah, right, you know, right. bad things. You know, oh, um, on, on the issue of pesticides, yes, um, you know, I, I think if you look at anybody's um, uh, uh, household, you'll find they do have pesticides. They do have herbicides. They have Roundup. They have other things to kill off the bugs. And um, when you look at it, uh, one of the biggest concerns I would have, uh, at least at least the concern, maybe not the biggest, is that homeowners, when they receive these things and if they have to mix them on their own, sometimes they mix it inappropriately. It's they don't know what they're doing. Too strong, right? Right, right. And so when you look at, um, you know, when you talk about bugs developing a, a resistance, that's probably because uh, if you don't give it enough of what it is to kill them off, they'll develop an immunity to it, or at least oh, a, a resistance to it. I see, and that's see. what's happened when mm -hmm. some of these mm -hmm, pla mm -hmm. uh, plants and animals uh, over time will develop a resistance to that. Mm -hmm. Just as if when we look at some of the other diseases that we have um, that come across, that um, uh, latest one, I guess, was the, uh, for pneumonia, how it's resistant to one of their, uh, the, um, the medicines we've been using mm -hmm. traditionally, so it's not working mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. some have developed, you know, in the process of replicating themselves, they've mm -hmm. developed mm -hmm. a resistance to that. So now we need to look at new things. Same goes for the plant, for those who are in the in the uh, agriculture industry. They constantly have to find things that will knock out whatever it is because mm -hmm. what you don't mm -hmm. want is the buildup of Im immunity, which makes whatever you have as a product um, less useful and probably not useful at all. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that means the pesticides and the other kinds of things too. Interesting, interesting. So this whole issue, oh, okay, one thought before I talk that, that question, about price, is it more expensive or is it cheaper to, to get the GMO products? 
Um, it's generally gen speaking, generally less expensive, cheaper because a farmer, um, if they have a way to control an insect or a way to control a weed in, in their, in their field, they don't have to pay the fuel to run a tractor through multiple times. Sure. They don't have to pay for the chemicals to control that pest. Sure. So their inputs are lower, mm -hmm. which reduces the cost mm -hmm. of, of that food across mm -hmm. the whole food chain. Mm -hmm. mm, I see. Oh, it'll make it cheaper then. Yeah, it does. Because uh, if you look at farming, uh, it, the biggest uh, costs are the inputs they have to bring, the fuel to run the system, the uh, fertilizers, the pesticides, the herbicides, all of that. Mm -hmm. which then gets tacked on before mm -hmm. it comes to market and then mm -hmm. ramps it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if it's mm -hmm. uh, cheaper to raise the crop using the skills that they have and, and the science behind it, mm -hmm. that'll keep the food costs lower than it would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. If you go to Europe, you find that the cost for food there is quite a bit higher. Yes, yes. You know? And I, I don't know if the American public would be willing to pay the kind of what they price for meat and the other things if they had to um, pay it at the rate what they pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be another issue to think about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so what is this issue with Monsanto? Why why are people now saying get out Monsanto? This Honolulu Weekly front page. You know what 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 is it? Are, are they are they correct? Are they misguided? Or are they just not have the right information? And and part of what I why I had Senator come here today is I want my listeners to know that this is information coming direct from sources, from direct from the top. Uh, can you tell us briefly what is this issue and why Why is it? Why is it that Monsanto is the bad guy now when they're the ones feeding us and they buy time with me to, to find workers? Um, why is it, sir, guys? Well, <laughs> you know, Monsanto is uh, really the big elephant in the whole thing, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they, they tend to focus on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, you know, you get stories that say, well, Monsanto goes after small farmers because they want to regrow it and use the seeds and all of that. Well, if if you look at uh, in um, how they develop seed, uh, they go to successive generations to get the traits they want. And if you reuse it um, and you keep replanting those, as an example, the seeds, what happens is that they tend to break down to how they got initially assembled together the families that they were you know, interbred with. And so what you have is something that doesn't have the traits you want, may have less of them in terms of its resistance to disease. Also, uh, the product itself, um, give an example. You know, I remember some years back, uh, mm -hmm. the University of Hawaii at CETAR, um, uh, College of Tropical Ag, they sold these seeds for papaya. And when we got them, it was free, but we had to sign a paper saying we would not regrow them. We wouldn't take the seeds from papaya, replant them. And the reason for that... Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. so you couldn't okay. do that. And the reason okay. for that is, again, what I said, as you do it, they tend to break out to various, mm -hmm. how they got reassembled mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And you lose some of the traits. And mm -hmm. some of the traits was important mm -hmm. was being able to resist the ring spot, mm -hmm. which basically almost killed off the papaya industry. So you can see why they don't want that to happen. Same mm -hmm. goes for the other kinds of seeds that are grown. I think I, I I can't speak for another company, but what I what I can talk about is is sort of our our uh, seed industry in general in Hawaii is has very rapidly become the the largest um, agricultural commodity in the state, and a lot of people are are unaware of that or or just now becoming aware of that. Um, Sugarcane and pineapple over the years have slowly moved to other parts of the world. Um, our industry now um, is a two hundred and fifty million dollar a year industry um and i think um the gmo itself uh, it, oh no just just seed seed production seed seed production yep, okay exactly okay um and i think um, there's seeds. a lot of seeds mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of of um, misunderstanding and a lot of, a lot of education that, that needs to happen so people understand what it is we do and why we do it and and the benefits that it that it gives to the island but i think we're right in that in that point now where we're um, we're beginning to to communicate more on on, a, on on why we're here and and why Hawaii makes sense and it's really the the climate it's the skilled agricultural workforce sure. that was here and, and many people um, coming from the pineapple and sugar industries are now transitioning over to to our company so you retain a agricultural workforce that is very skilled keeping people working in agriculture um, and plus, the it's it's probably one of the best climates in the world to be able to 
to breed plants year round. The climate is very stable and, and perfect for that. Yeah, not just to plant, but to live as a human being. <laughs> it's a great right. area. Yeah, right. definitely. Uh, the the other part is is that uh, the the industry employs about fourteen hundred full time employees today, and and probably about another six or seven hundred uh, seasonal part time. Uh, people that come in, you know, during our, our harvest or planting when we're um, extra busy. Sure. Uh, but uh, uh, as, as uh, Mark alluded to, uh, the industry uh, in direct uh, uh, benefits, those are wages and, and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, benefits, uh, health, medical, is about $250 million. But uh, when you put the indirect benefits, uh, you know, when they go out and spend money and buy trucks and cars and shop at the grocery stores, uh, it's about a contribution to the uh, state of Hawaii is about half a billion dollars. Oh, my goodness. A little, little more than that. That's so, amazing. That's a lot. So um, we, we've made a footprint here, and, and we're uh, proud of what we do and, and the, uh, the industry that we represent. That's wonderful. Uh, so uh, as far as Monsanto, I, I mean, I don't want to keep talking about them, but uh, they're in the news and their people are talking about them. So are they right or are they wrong? Or who is who's in the, are the people just, they don't just don't know? Because to me, this is very complicated. And the only reason I know about the GMO is because I, I, I read about uh, agri agribusiness when I was in the Philippines. And they were saying that I had this book and it says, you know, if you don't have agribusiness, you cannot feed the whole, the world. I mean, you'll, you, you'll go back in time and you'll have to plant your own and you can't just go to the grocery store uh so are is the public i know they also want the issue of labeling and all those things is the public really they just they're just not aware of this technology and how how advanced it is well i i think part of the reason why um, monsanto is is the um the center is that uh they probably have more seed products uh, mm -hmm. genetic engineered seed products on in the marketplace than than the other companies do mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, uh, when mm -hmm. you're number one you're always going to be targeted you're, you're going to be targeted sure and, sure. and, and uh, that's really the only reason that i can really think of because we we um you know it's it's like uh singling out a car manufacturer uh we all make seeds all the car manufacturers, you know, make, you have, cars. make cars or whatever. Right. But, uh, you know, if you're going to pick on one particular manufacturer that, you know, the big three or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Not fair. It's just it's just what sure, it is. It's sure. just what it is. They're exactly. the biggest. They're, exactly. they're the biggest. And exactly. I don't think it's any more than that. Okay. All right, guys. Listen, I got to take a little break here. Um, I have to do a station identification. Uh, this is by law. We got to get this on here. But, uh, um you got a little more time or okay all right why don't we do this i'll take a station identification break and when, and when we come back more of this uh, issue with gmos uh with senator clarence nishihara uh mark and mark mm -hmm. okay stay tuned everybody we'll be right back kphi honolulu k244 eo honolulu 96.7 fm 11 30 a.m a service of h hawaii media the following paid programming does not necessarily reflect the views of KPHI 96.7 FM, AM 1130, OC 882, KPHI. Let's go, let's go. Every once in a great while, there's a seismic shift in the world of entertainment. A moment where talent, technology, and innovation combine to change the game forever. You're about to witness unrivaled turntablism, knowledge, and sheer passion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Feel, 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 feel the power. Feel the bass. You are tuned in to the Midday Radio Show with Alan Alvarez. Filipino-American entertainment at its best. You're about to hear the latest contemporary OPM news and commentary, along with live guests and local entertainment. So relax lang kayo at pakinggan natin ang Midday Radio Show ni Alan Alvarez. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Marami, marami salamat sa inyong pagkikinig and uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, most of this is in English today. Uh, pero kung pwede kong Tagalogin, Tagalogin, Tagalogin. <laughs> Tagalog is hard sometimes. Anyway, uh, we are here, ladies and gentlemen, with um, Senator Clarence Nishihara and uh, Mark from Sigenta and then Mark also from DuPont. Uh, giants, I would say, also in the field of uh, 
uh, agriculture and agribusiness. Uh, so, so uh, what can what can you guys tell our listeners now to make them feel better about all this GMO issue? Uh, as a member of the public, when you start seeing it every day, you know, GMO this, GMO that, then you start seeing them now picketing, you know, striking and all these things. It kind of gives a, not only are you more aware, but you become more, you know, what's this? What's going on? Ano bayan? You know, or uh, what can you tell our listeners about GMO that can make them feel a little bit better so they don't pick up a stick and go out there and join them, you know, and, and, and you know, join the crowd, let's say. So that people and I'd like to have each 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 of you guys to just give us to, to, to let us know so that the listeners will be more makapante sila or they become more relaxed about this issue. You know, Al and I we, we really appreciate this opportunity to to be on your show because I think it's important that the listeners who are not that familiar with the issue get uh, information that are correct uh, without bias um, yes. and that uh, they can make their own choices. And I think that's what. What, what I'd like to see get done. Yes, sir. I think it's important that um, on the issue of GMOs, uh, and when you talk about labeling, I think what's happened is that once you uh, put it into people's heads that, you know, that the product is bad for you health-wise, that labeling it then uh, is, a, is like a red flag, <laughs> you know? Yes. And that's why I've been opposed to just labeling it because ah, to me, I unless see. you have, uh, you know, um, without regard to saying, okay, uh, we'll let you, we're going to label it, but really we think it's a bad product to have. So uh, when we label it, we'll identify it and we'll go after it. I think that's the wrong message. Mm. I think um, if it was, the, it's not like saying, you know, how many calories it is and sugar and the whatever. I think what happened is generally, and I think the, at the federal government level, they've resisted to these kinds of labeling because they said there's nothing wrong with the product. If it's nothing different between that and any other product, similar product that's grown, that's non-GMO, that is no discernible difference, they shouldn't have to label it. And mm -hmm. I think the mm -hmm. American Medical Association mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. board's decision mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that they've supported the, uh, the, um, the use of GMO uh, products being, uh, being sold and being consumed. They, mm -hmm. they themselves feel that there's nothing um, wrong uh, for uh, medical, medically or in, in the consumer's health. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. those are the kinds mm -hmm. of things I think well, these programs like these uh, that uh, offers to the listeners to get a better understanding of when they yes. hear these things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it's not like once you hear it that you should go out and say, well, I'm not going to eat it because it's GMO mm -hmm. uh, and it's bad. It's because they've heard that uh, people who are activists against the products saying GMOs are bad, so you shouldn't be eating it. Um, and it translates all the way down. I saw there was an ad in today's paper it was about papa. Um, I'm sorry. It was about taro, and I think what it did say is yeah, that I saw that. That's the insert yeah, yeah, this morning. Yeah, I, I like taro myself. Sure, so and do it, I. Uh, and it says um, GMO free. Well, mm. there is no GMO taro being raised or sold <laughs> in Hawaii, regardless where it's from, but that company or any other, yeah, it's because so, they just well, don't do not. it. Yeah. So you can say for any taro, you know, yes. there's no GMO. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. I yeah. thought you were against it just because of the cost. And that's what the paper said. Remember, there was an article yeah. that they interviewed you and they said right. that there well, was... Well, cost a, is one of it, but mm -hmm. also sending out the message that something's wrong with it and scaring people, I think is the wrong way to go. That's, I agree with that, Senator, and I didn't know that until now. So thank you for that. Right. right. The, uh, the other thing is, is um, we, we've been eating uh, uh, GMO foods for the last 18 years. That's uh, three trillion servings. Uh, mm. That's that's a healthy. My goodness. Uh, that's a big sample size, wow. as you would say. And wow. uh, there's there's not one incident of, of people getting sick or illness or or, or, or death or anything worse. Uh, so it's you know, I think there's a lot of proof in in that. Uh, when you think about the farmers that have been farming this for the last number of years, they've been feeding it to their farm animals, and they would be the first to raise their hand and let us know that there would be something there's wrong. There's a problem. Yeah, there's a problem. But before all that, we go back to the studies that that uh, these things are you know, these products are thoroughly studied for years to look at the uh, at the the allergens that Mark had talked about earlier, and also for the nutritional value. So they have to be uh, the same as their counterparts, their conventional and organic uh, 
uh, products. And nutritious. And nutritious. There are 25 scientific organizations, and, and Senator mentioned one, the American Medical Association, National Academy of Sciences, the Royal uh, Academy of Science in England. Uh, you, you go across the world, every scientific organization validates that, that genetic engineering, that GMO is safe. Actually, I want some of that rice that Mark was talking about. <laughs> I mean, that's, I'm actually interested more in GMO. It tastes better. You get more, more uh, nutritional value and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, uh, well, Thank you for the opportunity. You got me sold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sold. Just to add a little bit to what, to what Mark had said, um, yeah. it, it has been, people have been eating it for, for decades um, with no health issues. Um, mm -hmm. It's rigorously tested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, do I eat it? Absolutely. Sure. Do, would I feed it to my kids? Absolutely. Sure, sure. Um, I think on a broader sort of global scale, our, the population of the planet is growing I know. incredibly. I by know, by 2050, we'll have 9 billion people on the planet. Yeah. Are you going to feed them? And how are you going to feed these I people? Know, and so um, plant breeding is going to be critical, whether it's uh, conventional plant breeding or mm -hmm. using biotech traits. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. going to be what's required to get enough food to feed all, all of the people on the planet. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so um, I guess um, based on what we've discussed today, there should there should be people. Sh you should not be worried uh, about GMO. So mukhang wala naman tayo talagang problema mga kaibigan dito sa GMO uh, because it seems like it's controlled, it's regulated, and uh, I, I really don't think companies are out to kill people to feed them so they would die. I think they feed them so they can get full, they can get healthy, and they can get on with their lives. Uh, so, um, uh, Senator, you know, I want to say thank you, uh, Mark, also Mark, for you guys to come here and, and share with us because it, it's so complex now, um, farming. Uh, you, you just don't think about, you know, let's say Pedro there on the corner who just tills. We're talking about very scientific and very uh, 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 biologically oriented type of farming. Um, this, this, the future, do you see more use of GMOs as we go into the future as far as changing traits? Uh, to 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 help uh, health, for example, you mentioned the golden rice. I mean, will, will be will we will we have also golden papayas, or will we have golden corn? You know, so that it can make it more and um, actually um, genetically produce better food and eventually better people, healthier people. I think uh, to answer that, yes, there there will be work on on healthier oils, for oil mm -hmm. crops, for example, sure. ones that are better for your heart. Yes, um, a lot of focus on on uh, being able to withstand drought. So as yes. as the as we have global climate change, weather oh, yes. is very uh, very different than it used to be. So That's being right. able to resist those sorts of things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think those are going to be very important. And then also just being able to have plants that can produce crops. Around the world in very difficult environments, whether they have insect pressure, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. drought, or whatever environment they need to be uh, growing food into. All right. Okay. Anything to say on that? No. no? All right. Well, I'd, I'd like to be healthier, and I'm sure people in general would also like to be healthier. I'd like to spend a little bit less on my groceries, uh, but you know, get the same quality, if not better, uh, with this GMO. So um, I want to thank you guys for coming down here and sharing this knowledge with the, us and our listeners. Um, we, there's many of us, many Filipinos here. Actually, it's good that it's lunchtime around so that people will be, you know, enthusiastic about it. And uh, I want to invite everybody who's listening tomorrow. Uh, we are also going to have Senator Nishihara here again uh, to tackle the issue of agriculture in general. Is that correct, Senator? That's correct. And who, who will we, we be having here tomorrow? We're going to have uh, Dr. Uh, Maria Gallo. She's the, uh, the dean of the college, UH's College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Fantastic. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll have that. We'll continue the discussion on agriculture tomorrow. Uh, but I really wanted to tackle this topic of GMO today. And I think with the information you gave us, I feel a lot better. I mean, smooth. How do you feel? I mean, as somebody who's just listening. And yeah. All the information you guys gave, like, you know, I, I had no idea what GMO was and now uh, the kind of products that you guys are talking about and what you guys are trying to do to kind of help Hawaii with our, our groceries. It's, you know, it's making me think twice about, you know, what we go to the store to buy. So, yes, appreciate what you guys do. 
Yeah, we really do. Actually, I do. I, 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 I didn't know that that's how technical we're getting with food production these days. Uh, but uh, at least pe our pe our listeners here now know. And um, we'll we'll put it on the video so that it can also be disseminated and that people can so that they can learn more about this uh, the future actually of food production. So thank you very much, guys. And um, on behalf of everybody here, as we say in the Philippines, uh, maraming maraming salamat at mabuhay, mabuhay po kayo lahat. Thank you so much. You. All right, we're gonna yeah take a commercial break here, go into some songs, and then we'll continue with the midday radio show with Alan Alvarez. Wakay nga alis mga kaibigan, babalik tayo kaagad. Alan Alvarez on the radio, KPHI. 